You have just moved to Japan. You have a small apartment kitchen, no kitchen tools, and no idea where the nearest grocery store is. You could live off $2 konbini onigiris, as many people do. While I have nothing against a good onigiri, I have a better proposition for you. How about teaching yourself an essential and satisfying life skill, and making some cheap, delicious, and healthy food for yourself? Let's cook. Wanna cook? First, you need to acquire cooking implements. With luck, your home or apartment may have some of these already. If not, here is a list of some essential tools you should consider. How expensive and how big may depend on the size of your living space, and how long you are staying in Japan. To find the kitchen electronics, the big expensive stuff, you should look at going to a Japanese hardware or home supply store, or a used electronics store. In Kochi, we have Konon and Komedi. For smaller, less important implements, these can be acquired for cheap at a Daiso or a 100 yen store. If you don't have a car, you may have to consider getting the heavier, cumbersome objects delivered. Well, I don't doubt you could cycle home with an entire fridge in your bike basket, you might get funny looks. There are countless other cooking tools you could buy for all sorts of purposes, but with these basic tools, you can easily get started. So, with some basic tools ready to go, you now need to get outside and scout out your local grocery store and supermarket options. How close are the nearest stores? Can you easily get there by walking? By bike? By bus or train? Are they inconvenient to get to? How is the variety of the products for sale? Do they carry lots of foodstuffs you are familiar with, or are the ingredients mostly unknown for you? How is the price and freshness? These are all things you can consider when deciding where to go and what to purchase. Before you begin cooking, there are some staples you should keep in stock to aid in your cooking endeavors. Here are a few examples. This list depends on you and could be as extensive and intensive as you want it to be. I've left a link to a list in the description that I think should have you pretty much covered. Part of the responsibility of cooking, especially cooking for others, is that you know and understand basic food safety. Keep a clean kitchen, sink, and clean cooking utensils. Change your sponge often. Check the expiration date on your food and check whether it requires to be refrigerated or not. Raw meat and fish contaminate surfaces and your hands, so if you handle them, you should wash your hands well with soap and water before moving on to another task. Also, wash and clean the surfaces that raw food has touched. Chicken and pork should be cooked all the way through. Fish and seafood should be cooked entirely in the majority of cases. Sushi and sashimi have special preparation procedures or are made from a certain fish which allow the raw fish to be eaten safely. So yeah, double check, do your research. Ground beef should be cooked through. Eating rare burgers is unsafe to do. Steak however is safe to cook and leave the middle raw. Most food, especially meat, should be refrigerated after cooking. Leaving food out at room temperature for an extended period of time causes bacteria to grow on the food and makes it dangerous for consumption. Of course, the exception is if you want to purposely ferment your food, such as if you are making sauerkraut, kimchi, or sourdough. Dry, non-perishable goods, especially rice, sugar, and flour, should be stored in sealed containers to prevent insects and other unwanted creatures from becoming part of your diet. In Japan, there are a host of little guys that will want to share your rice and flour with you. If something looks off or smells off, you aren't obligated to eat it. Mold is especially a problem in more humid climates. Soft foodstuffs like bread and oranges are the most susceptible. It might be tempting to scrape away the mold and eat what's there, but mold is only a surface reflection of the fungus that's growing on the food and the mold will probably have roots deep into the bread, fruit, or vegetable. When in doubt, throw it out. Sinks are also quite dirty. 
take care to keep your produce out of the sink unless you have it sterilized. <laughs> it's also not necessary to wash meat that you buy from the grocery store. In fact, I would highly advise against it. However, fruit and vegetables whose surfaces you eat, grapes, apples, carrots, mushrooms, lettuce, you should wash or rinse these before eating or processing. If this is your first foray into cooking, try looking up a recipe online that you would enjoy. Maybe something that's not too difficult. Gather the ingredients and tools you need to make it and then give it a shot. YouTube tutorials also work great, but website recipes are wonderful too. There are all different types of cooking too, and different ways to cook, even the most basic food like eggs. Like any other art, you will get better with cooking over time and your skills will increase. The first meal I struggled to cook in Japan was toast and scrambled eggs. I managed to burn my toast. My family has a rule called the broken plate rule. Essentially, if you put in all the effort to make a nice meal and it gets ruined for some reason, just forget about it. You can go and buy takeout. I didn't follow this rule for my first breakfast of champions, but it's not bad advice. Some meals you make for yourself by improvisation or recipe will turn out beautiful. Others might be overly salty, burnt, or just plain inedible. Especially since cooking is time sensitive and different techniques for ingredients lead to better results, don't be too hard on yourself if it doesn't work out. Follow the broken plate rule, get takeout, and try again another time. Cooking practical food for everyday use, eggs, sandwiches, soups, stews, doesn't have to be boring and tedious. You are the chef, you're in charge. You have the freedom to make it exciting for yourself. Tired of it being bland? Dump some Tabasco sauce and red pepper flakes into that bad boy. Eat raw garlic, onions, and ginger. Drink straight lemon juice, I dare you. But for real, if you have the right techniques and the right ingredients, you can make good looking, healthy, delicious meals for yourself and your friends. And over time, it won't be much of a challenge. Japanese supermarkets might not have everything you're looking for to make a given recipe, but you can often find an adequate substitute or find the ingredient at another store. If you don't have the time to cook every meal, you can consider meal prepping. I actually prefer this. Buy plastic or glass storage containers from a 100 yen store to refrigerate meals for yourself. It changes the tempo of your day. Instead of spending extra time, perhaps one to two hours cooking that day, you can just cook a few meals in bulk one day for that same one to two hours, and then eat those leftovers throughout the week. I quite enjoy this. It helps me keep my meals on track, and I can put a little extra effort into what I'm cooking, so it's freaking delicious. You think I get boring of eating the same thing for four days straight, or five days, but it's really not that big of a deal, especially if what I cooked up is freaking delicious. But if I do get bored, I have the freedom to cook something else, or prep something else. I'm not a chef, I'm not even a cook. But I do enjoy cooking and eating, and I hope you will too in Japan. That's all for now. Take care and be bold.